Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Bradley Thompson here and we are back with another episode of the Living the Canadian Dream podcast and today we have a special guest. We have uh, one of my old friends from high school. His name is Dan Fershat. He's doing some pretty sweet stuff right now. Very interesting stuff. This guy is a huge adventurer like you'll find out in this episode. Um, to give you an idea of what he's about, basically he lives up north now, uh, a few hours away from Toronto. Um, and he works at his family's distillery. So their company is called Copperhead Distillery and Spirits, and they make a lot of different alcoholic products like liquor, um, rum, whiskey, moonshine, and a lot of their stuff you can find at LCBO, and we'll, we'll get into it, but it's just they have a lot of awesome stuff and it's super interesting to talk about like how do you make whiskey how do you make rum all those different processes and like sort of the legacy of that company the family business um but we'll also be talking about some of his passions which is like hunting he's into archery and bow hunting uh, i don't know anything about that stuff to be honest the only stuff i know about <laughs> like bow hunting and crossbows is literally joe rogan so yeah, we're going to learn a lot today. So I want to learn about that. Um, we're going to be talking about, I think he's super into running, um, trail running and stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great conversation, talk about some hiking stuff uh, and outdoors. You know, he's, he's super into the outdoors and so am I. So it's going to be a fantastic episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. His social media is Dan Fershat. So D-A-N-F-E-R. C H A T, literally his name. You can follow him on Instagram um, and check out their company, Copperhead Distillery and Spirits. Uh, and get your friggin' moonshine on, okay? It's lit. It's lit, and it's legal. So it's not like the the uh, <laughs> the southern moonshine where they're making it in a barn. This is a legit company. They're a distillery, and they and I, I'm gonna definitely try out their stuff because uh, yeah. Gotta love rum, gotta love whiskey, gotta love moonshine. It's crazy. Um, so it should be a fantastic episode. Uh, make sure you guys hit him up with any questions you have. And let's just hop into this thing. Enjoy this goddamn episode. Living the Canadian dream. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Bradley Thompson, here, and this is episode 33 of the Living the Canadian Dream podcast. I can't even speak already. <laughs> God damn it. Um, we're back. We're back. And today we have a special guest. Uh, I haven't seen you in a few years. It's been a while. Oh, yeah. Um, so today we have on Dan Fershat. Uh, we used to go to high school together. And, yeah. you know, I've been following you, obviously, on the social media <laughs> stuff, and you're doing friggin' really cool stuff. Yeah. You're lots, living a wild lifestyle. Yeah, lots of interesting things yeah. up in the north. It's yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so I thought it was just like, damn, I got to get you on. <laughs> and then we're going to catch up yeah. and uh, figure out what the hell's going on in your life. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Yeah. I feel honored. This yeah. is cool. Uh, this is actually kind of like my first podcast that I've done. So, That's all good, man. You know, this is really cool. It's exciting Sweet. for me. Um, I'm, I'm pumped up. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Get fired up. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks <laughs> no for having worries, me on. I got no some gifts for you, which we can give out Sweet. in a bit. We awesome. Can, yeah, so awesome. Yeah, got some cool. good, good stuff. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So we'll get into some. We have a, I have a lot of questions for you. Um, so if people don't know, so you're into hunting. You're into like the distillery game. Yeah, outdoors. Um, yeah, trapping. you're just like a super outdoors guy. So that's sweet. Oh, so yeah. we'll get into all of that stuff. Um, but basically, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself, like if people don't know. Um, yeah. A little bio. A little bio? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's a little bit about me. Um, yeah, I love everything and everything about the uh, and anything about the outdoors. Yeah. You know, very passionate about that hunting, fishing, uh, trapping, just being outside, camping, hiking, yeah. uh, that sort of stuff. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, um, you know, went to business school, went to Brock for four yeah. years, which is, which is fun, has ups and downs, of course, everyone knows <laughs> course, that going yeah, to university. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, so basically for me, like the last three and a half years, I've been focusing uh, two different companies, I guess. Uh, one just can't kind of came to an end, but mainly it's been uh, our family distillery that we opened up. For sure. Um, and that, yeah, we opened, we started that. Uh, that would have been summer, 
summer 2016 and then december 2016 is when we had our first storefront like, very cool on our like our property where we live very and cool. then all of a sudden it just uh, that's awesome it, so, so 2016 you guys started yep cool. so yeah 2016. And then what's the name of the distillery copperhead, it's copperhead distillery yeah okay, cool yeah awesome very cool yeah so what sort of stuff do you guys sell there like, so what are you guys doing? we do a wide range of stuff we sell anything from some moonshines which is you know just your grain spirits made with rye corn we sell vodka a couple different flavors of vodka we yeah. do uh rums the gins and some specialty products, one being the uh, apple pie moonshine, which is like, apple pie moonshine. Yeah, yeah, I, that's I, crazy. I, I brought it here actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I brought it here. So here's that's so, so cool. So this is how we sell. Oh, I love the freaking. Yeah, so that's, you, that's how we sell. So that is our top seller, like by far. Really? It is. Yes, twenty four percent. It's like you just open the lid and just just drink it. I mean, that's <laughs> crazy. I don't encourage that. You know, you know yeah. drink responsibly, but. You know, if you're having a fun time, you can warm it up. It's like wicked. So that's yours to enjoy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah no that's I, sick. I got man. another one. Too. Thanks, man. Yeah, and this is uh, spice from awesome, bro. Request. So there's so that's kind of our labeling. Um, about to get hammered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're, things are about to get interesting here. So yeah, so these products, this is 40 percent. That's 24 percent. Wow, it's wicked. This is like we have four different kinds of rums. We got like a white, we have a white rum, a dark okay. dark rum, spice rum, and then a coconut rum. Okay. And the coconut rum is in the LCBO right now, and they're actually, we're swapping that out for the spice rum. Very cool. Because it's like super popular. Yeah? So, yeah, cool. it's like delicious. Very cool, it's, that's yeah. sweet, man. Yeah. So. I, I love the packaging, I love the mason jars. Yeah, that's such a I know, cool I know. Thing. So, Especially for the moonshine, this I is know. like. I know, it was like, it's all part of it. It's all part of the brand. Like, you know, where, where we first started was out, you know, um, so, um, yeah, for, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, about 30 minutes north of Huntsville, where our distillery is located. So how far um, away is that from Toronto? We were talking so about we were three hours. Yeah, three hours north it's of goddamn mission. Yeah, yeah, it's a mission. <laughs> it's fun. Once you get past, you know, what is that? Uh, I guess Aurelia area. Mm -hmm. It's just like awesome. You know, these trees everywhere, no yeah. traffic. It's fantastic. They start swiping out the like watch for kids signs for yeah. watch for deer signs. Yeah, exactly. That's when yeah, you know you're up crossing, north. Yeah, yeah. That. That's like, when cold. you know you're up north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when the signs start transitioning. Oh, yeah. You go down to the two lanes and people are, oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where, you know, where our first distillery was. It was okay. just, it was literally, we had no marketing, no nothing, yeah. no website. It was just word of mouth. And it was uh, 10 minutes off like this old dirt road. Very cool. And we didn't even think anything, think anything of it. So we just got the cheapest jars possible. And we're yeah. Like, Fuck. Put yeah. it into a mason jar. And it just took off. And it just like, yeah, man, people that's... love that stuff. They're like moonshine, hilly billy stuff. And they don't crack that open. And it's crazy, man. It like it's, a, it's really cool packaging. I mm -hmm. really like this. Yeah, so right now, because like these are liter jars, we fill them up 850 mils. Okay. Um, so we're actually looking at customizing our mason jars. So okay. we say like copperhead around the outside. That's very cool. Yeah, the only thing I is like that. we have to order like 50,000 bottles or something. Yeah, so like how many how many uh, bottles are you putting out a day? Like selling like, or or just even like making like do you guys making, produce every um, single day so we try to like concentrate towards like the earlier days in the week so the first two three days of the week we we will depending on obviously summer kind of picks up you yeah know, yeah and it's our busiest time yeah but we would go bottle i mean two people bottling uh i mean 500 bottles something like that Damn. yeah wow. yeah so and that's just you know that's just for the store we also have the lcbo line we have four products on our lcbo line so what are you guys selling in lcbo you said you have a rum you have a yep. moonshine? Yeah, so for so we actually have five different kinds of uh, of moonshines. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I know you you're talking yep, yeah, so No problem. <laughs> so we have five different kinds of moonshines, but we have, our top one is Magneto on Moonshine. Okay. And that's just a one percent pure rye. And that one percent pure rye. It's one percent pure rye. What does that even mean? So the rye is a grain. Okay. So like you know, uh, like corn or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So rye is just a it's just grain. Okay. And then when that grows up, you know, the seeds from that, that's how you make the liquor. So you um, pretty much what you want you want to cook it to release all the sugars and the starches. Okay. And then you add water, you add yeast, um, and then the sugar content when that mixed together, that's how you ferment. And that's oh, okay. when that fermentation happens, you start to get the alcohol, and then. Once you have your, once it's fermented and all the alcohol has been made, then what you do is, uh, you, that's the distilling part. Yeah. You heat that up, you and then you start to extract all the the vapors from it. Okay. So then you so you heat that up to about you always, you want to slowly raise up your kettle. You know, one sixty, you'll start to get some drops. Yeah. You know, because it'll, it'll go, it'll run up your still, 
and then it'll condense at the top with like you know because you have like cold water at the top so the vapors will go up it'll condense into a liquid and Very then cool. and then drop out into alcohol Damn. and then we just concentrate that so we'll get 95 percent out of the still like that's 95 percent yeah God yeah damn. so that's like yeah it's it, rubbing alcohol oh, like, oh yeah yeah have you, you tried it yeah you've probably oh, yeah, tried I've it tried yeah, it. yeah. yeah. You, you take a sip of it and you're like god damn okay that was good like wakes you up cleans yeah. your teeth you know you're good to go yeah <laughs> Damn. But uh, but yeah, we usually when you're making your rum through your rise or like your whiskeys, you'll run it. So that's um to get like a 95 percent, like that's like a column still. Okay. So you like want to really just purify. You want to make pure ethanol. Okay. When you're doing your uh, whiskey runs or your rum runs, uh, you want to do like a, it's called a pot head or pot okay. still. So that is like you're just you're trying to pull all the flavor Damn. with it. So you're just trying to pull it as hard as you can, fast as you can, and then that is like you're left with like 60 percent. Very cool. Take. Yeah, yeah. That's very cool. Damn. Yeah. So how long so, does that process take for making one? Like you're you're talking about the one percent rye one. What is that? This that was rum. Uh, the rye. One oh, percent pure rye. So yeah. One yeah. percent pure. How long does it take for that entire so process? So that's about a week and a half. Week and I'd a say. Half. Yeah, I'd, I'd say from like fermenting it, uh, distilling it, and then you know you doing your final or whatever. touches. Yeah, yeah. Because cool. like we we have you know we our stuff is colored. It's so moonshine actually. All our stuff is considered moonshine. Yeah. So what we um, what, what what clarifies something as moonshine? So that's something that's been unaged. So okay. So a grain spirit that's been unaged. Okay. So once you've hit a minimum of three years age, okay. that's Canadian whiskey. Oh. Yeah, by like the federal law. Really? Yeah, it's Canadian yeah. whiskey once you hit three years. So we were like th we're three and a half, three years old. So it's kind of hard to produce something. Yeah. That, you know, Canadian whiskey when we've only been around for that long. So. Um, but that's like yeah. a really interesting niche because. Yeah. I've never seen any moonshine at <laughs> yeah, LCBO yeah, in my yeah. life. So there's, like that's a good niche. It is, it is. And uh there's a there's a couple of them. Like there's well there's um Reunion Moonshine, okay. which is out of Perth. Uh they have good great fantastic product too. They do they do apple pie, they do maple and everything. Okay. They're they're awesome. Um very, very tasty products and I think is there another one? Oh, uh, Murphy's Law. Yeah, Murphy's Law. Okay. They're they're also very good that's a too. Cool name. Yeah, they're up in uh, Elmira, so that's just actually like a little bit north of Kitchener, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and those are the only kind of moonshiny, but not a lot in the LCBO though. Yeah, you know, yeah. See, like they're around kind of retail store, but not a lot in the LCBO. Very yeah. cool, man. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. So so in the LCBO, you have one percent rye. Yep. Um, did I say it right? One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. So okay, it's like okay. a pure rye. Um, pure rye. Okay. Pure rye. Yep. And then what is that called? So that's called Magnetowan Moonshine. Okay. Cool. Yep. And then what else do you guys have in the LCBO? So we have a corn and rye mixture, like of the mash. So okay. you know how the same with the rye. So it's the same process, but we just have half and half with corn and rye. Uh, it has a little smoky flavor to it, so we call it um, smoking gun. Well, actually, in the retail store, it's called smoking gun. Okay. In the LCBO, That's a sick name. I like yeah, that. and it's got some guns on it. So in the LCBO, it's called Iron Cat. Okay. So the reason for that is because we because you have to submit everything through the LCBO. Yeah, they, yeah. Of course, they have a monopoly on it all. Of course. So they regulate the shit out of everything. So with the smoking gun, um, we presented them that label and said. They have to get approval of it. Yeah. And they didn't approve our label. Really? Yeah, because they're like, oh. They have approval over labels and Oh, yeah. Stuff oh, yeah. Everything, Damn. everything. Yeah. In yeah. your storefront. Oh, it's ridiculous. Wow. But yeah. It's nuts the, the amount of control that they got. That's crazy. Yeah. And wow. um, so anyway, they're like, oh, uh, yeah. So it has guns on it and it's, a, it's you're drinking it. So we're going to associate that with drinking and like violence. Oh, my so God. So we can't have that on the label. Oh, my like, God. Oh, so what you guys have to do? Redesign a label? Yeah, like, we re redesigned it, put a little cat on into it. You know, <laughs> the iron cat kind of signifies our last name. Not, not a lot yeah. of people know that, but we put a little cat on there cool, to make them happy. Cool. So that's very yeah. cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a really weird like thing that they do. Eh? I didn't. Yeah. I knew obviously they regulate like you know the packaging, probably the alcohol percentage, yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff. Oh yeah, but. but um, Labeling Ev everything, man. It, labeling, yeah. Um, the, the common name on there, cause like you know, so you'll have your jar, and then yeah. so th so what? What they don't approve of the stuff that goes into our store, really. Okay. Like the labeling, like they still have to test the products. Yeah. But for like you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't have pirate rum there. You got to have like rum is spice or whatever, and then like uh, the French side and the English side, and yeah. then like they get confused on the the main name and yeah, oh it was, gosh. it's been a crazy, yeah, so actually when we started, when we had our products in 2017, um, like the Magnetomon Moonshine, okay. we wanted to put it into the LCBO as Magnetomon Moonshine, yeah. they didn't approve Moonshine, they actually yeah. didn't approve the word Moonshine, yeah, yeah. and I was like, oh, okay, whatever, so they said no, but you can use whiskey, just not Canadian whiskey, just whiskey, but just whiskey, like, 
Okay. So is whatever. that what it is in the in the store? No. So so that was so that was happened for a year. Okay. A year later, they they changed their minds, okay. and the federal laws changed. Actually, you can't use uh, whiskey anymore. Yeah. So just plain whiskey is now associating with like Canadian whiskey through years. Yada yada yada. So, but now you can use moonshine again. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, so what we wanted. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah. So it's like, oh. That's well, crazy. That's, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I, I guess because like also they're probably like, oh, people associate moonshine with like a yeah. southern guy like cooking it in yeah. his barn. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like breaking get, bad. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're going to get sick. You're going to get blind. Yeah. And you're going to do this. And yeah. yeah it's, a lot of. But yeah. Like, it's not this, like that. <laughs> yeah. Like it's totally different. Yeah. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. obviously you guys are legit professionals and a legit I'll distillery. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like you guys are a legit distillery. You're not yep. like yep. Billy yeah. Bob from, you know. Yeah. We were, we're not doing off like our back porch which, yeah you know, maybe we did back then i don't yeah, know no, no, but, no, but yeah it's yeah, it, a lot of people and a lot of people come in they're like oh yeah so i have and they everyone talks about their stills that they got like yeah. all these like hillbilly guys they come in they actually they talk, make their own stuff they make their own stuff and they're like asking us for advice and it's oh like my gosh, dude. man oh boy I've seen yeah. this movie before <laughs> yeah and they, they all think that like it's legal you know because you can make your own beer you yeah. can make your own wine so they think distilling you can do, but you yeah. can't. Like no, the, the actual act of distilling is like a super, super yeah. legal. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like yeah. especially like creating yeah. moonshine. Like it's yeah, it, you're known like it's an illegal thing, but like this mm-hmm. is legit. Like this, yeah. it's very cool, and that's mm-hmm. why I think that's like that's a very cool thing. Like you're making a name for like moonshine in general. Yeah, like, it's yeah, like a legit drink. Mm-hmm. People people are deceived by it too. They're like they they come in the store and they go, oh moonshine, ooh that must taste like awful. Ooh yeah. moonshine, and they try it and they're actually like, oh. That actually tastes pretty good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I drink it. That's cool. <laughs> like I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't make something I wouldn't drink. You know what you guys should do is you guys should. I don't know in your stores or something, but like, even like I don't know if you guys do samples. You guys do sampling. Yeah, yeah free sampling of all of our products. You know what you should do? This is just like my marketing side. Okay? <laughs> um, this because I'm also reading an audio book right now. It's called yeah. Onward. Uh, okay. It's by uh, Howard Schultz. He's the uh, founder of Starbucks. Okay. Um. So what you guys should do is if you guys ever have like taste testing and people are like, oh, I don't know what sort of alcohol I like, put like the standard rums or whatever out, mm. like say, like, I don't know how, like five or whatever. Yeah. And then have moonshine as some of them. Don't mm. tell them which one is what. Right. And then a lot of times people will make decisions based on like what they think, like, oh, moonshine, True. I'm not yeah. like, uh, but they might like moonshine instead. So like yeah. the reason I brought that up is yeah. because Starbucks did that with uh, their instant coffee. Really? They came out with their instant coffee because people are just like instant co- coffee's crap. Yep. So they would give uh, people like in like the actual company mm-hmm. like samples of like coffee, but they wouldn't tell them that it's instant. Yeah. yeah. And then after <laughs> they they would be like, "This is instant coffee," and then it's like, "No, it isn't." Like, no. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I, it's it yeah, but it's. I don't, I don't know. Because yeah, like. Because there is, you, I guess, a stigma behind like moonshine because of yeah. movies and stuff like that. Well, which it, isn't legit. No, and kind of going off that, so. It, Kind of, but it's kind of funny. So one one day we we made up like a cocktail drink, and we had okay. Um, so we had uh, vanilla vodka, and we have a black currant vodka. We mixed those two together, and we had cranberry juice. Okay. Well, there was some miscommunication with us, and then we put the black currant bottle and the coconut rum bottle. Okay. But vanilla vodka is still in there. Oh. So when people were drinking, they're like, "Oh yeah, I taste the coconut in that. I really taste the coconut in oh, that." Oh my god. So gosh. it's like that yeah, perceived yeah. thing is just like. There's but there's no nothing. Coconut. Yeah, there's nothing in there, and they're like, "Oh, wait, no, it's not." It's a, and then I, my mom sent me a photo of like the setup. It's got like coconut rum, the big you know cocktail drink, and then black curtain. I'm like, "Hey, mom, it's uh, it's the uh, coconut rum, not uh, it's vanilla, not coconut." She's like, "Oh, I've been telling people the whole day it's been coconut." It's like, <laughs> "Oh." But yeah, a lot of people whoops. wouldn't know unless it's like a chef or like somebody that's like a yeah like super into alcohol or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like even when like when I go out for a dinner with Sam, you know Sam, yeah, um, like yeah. she's a chef, and nice. I'll try something. I'll be like, yeah, it's, it's like whatever. But yeah. then she'll be like, no, it this is what it has in it, and just like I don't have Whoa, those taste buds. Yeah, so, yeah, like, it's I like oh, I don't know. My like, palate's not there. <laughs> even like when we go to like say like a French place or something like something that's like kind of fancy. So they have all the fancy names on the uh, on yeah. the menu. Yeah, I have no idea what half of them are. So I'm just like telling her like explain these yeah, things what, to what, me. I don't get that? it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. Yeah, that's crazy. So so you guys have those two. Uh, what else? Well, what else do you have? Right. LCBO? So we got the black currant vodka. Okay. That's my mom's favorite. She pretty much developed that one. But really, yeah, yeah. She's like she because she had. I don't know if it was Smirnoff or one of those 
whatever vodkas the, they had a black currant and then they took it away okay. and she used to love it so we just what we did we just made our plain vodka then we have a natural flavor of black currant that we okay. just add to it okay and then that's black currant vodka you just sort of tested it out until yeah. you found out a recipe yep exactly and so, so that black currant vodka is in the lcbo and then our coconut rum is in the lcbo uh but we're swapping that out actually for the spice rum yeah. because like well, last year like that outsold the coconut like five to one really yeah that, that yeah. could not we could not keep the spice yeah, on go the all in then. yeah i freaking i love that stuff yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> sweet yeah i'll have to try it that's that's yeah. awesome man that's that's very cool like it's it's wild man it's it's been a crazy yeah so so crazy. why did you guys like why did your family decide to start a distillery like, Ooh. how did that come well about? The, there's there's a couple stories yeah yeah but mainly it's uh so my dad he's been an entrepreneur his whole life really his whole life he's he's only worked for himself that's so awesome. if he were to hand in a resume, it would just be his companies. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. So he's been he's been working himself. So he's always tried to jump on opportunities, you know, mm -hmm. that just he looks at just like any kind of entrepreneur. Hey, what is a niche market? Yeah. And go for it. And what Sweet. would it take? So um kind of yeah, so kind of long story short, we were looking at, you know, just some ideas and uh this was kind of back then when um, you know, marijuana was kind of, mm -hmm. you know, licenses, people were getting licenses for that. And same thing with the alcohol business, like craft, uh, breweries, yeah. the craft breweries was kind of booming. Yeah. And then we just said, you know, what about like distilling and stuff? And, uh, yeah. So then we kind of just were looking at some stuff, looking at what it would take to actually get a license. Yeah. And, um, that was kind of it. And we, That's very cool. yeah, I got last year university came out and my dad said, Hey, so you want to, so this was 2016 or like before yeah, 2016? Well, this was kind of in the talks. Like you're planning, yeah. Yeah, I say early 2016, mm -hmm. late 2015 in the talks of all this happening. Yeah. To me, I, I was just like, I don't know, how, what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, know, you never really know. And you're just like, okay, yeah, let's just get our license to mm -hmm. make stuff legally and, you know, get our license to sell stuff and see how it goes. And then we got our license in the summertime to make it. But there's like... I think it's like nine different licenses that you need. Wow. Yeah, to like, whereas you manufacture it, you, you can make it, you can store it, you can bottle it, then you can sell it. Wow. All of these Damn. different licenses. That's it's, crazy. And it's like, it's like a ladder. You just got to go back and forth, boom, boom, and like try and get, so you have to get this license to get that license yeah. to get that lit. So then it's do you heavy. have to renew that every year? Probably. Uh, it's a, well, one license I think you have to renew every year. Another one is every like two years. Okay. So you got to talk to like the AGCO, which is the alcohol game. Yeah, it was something, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you got to talk to them um, about getting your licenses to sell the, the alcohol and then the LCBO to actually make it. Cool. And, and then yeah. do they come into the distillery and, like, check everything? Like, uh, not really, no. Yeah. No, they, they will audit our products like they'll they'll grab a, our bottles off the shelf oh what, and then what, test it and test whatever. it yeah and they'll be like oh and they'll test the, the percentage of it Very and then they'll say ooh, because like we we have we actually got caught with that yeah so all of a sudden because when, you, when you're making it bulk right it's hard yeah. to like get dead on if like, you have to be so 40 percent alcohol mm -hmm. you have to be within uh point the point three yeah point three above or below the okay. percentage and that's it's freaking tough because yeah. When temperature changes, the reading on what you're reading for the alcohol, yeah. Um, also, just uh, like weight too. Mm -hmm. So it's it's crazy. So if you if we measure, so we got this high like really expensive hydrometer to read it now, but we were also we we're just doing it by hydrometer. Hydrometer is like just like a, a weighted. Um, it just measures like the density of alcohol. Okay. So then with the density of alcohol and water, that way, that's how you can actually read. Oh, so that's how they uh, measure it. I yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And then the temperature from that, the, from what it's reading will impact. So if it's colder, it'll be more, it'd be more, it'd be higher percentage from what you're actually reading. If it's warmer, it'll be lower. So oh. we had to like do all these calculations. And when we started out, that's all we had. Yeah, we just had yeah. this hydrometer. So we were, we were pretty close, but they'd be like, oh, you're 39%. Damn. Not good enough. So they delist it so they're really? like we'll delist it unless you send us another product that's dead on 40. damn they get real strict and so we have to be it's either 40.3 or four or uh 39.7 damn we have to be in that range really and so it's, it's by points yeah damn. and when you're doing you know thousands of liters of alcohol and you're gotta gotta make everything you know 40 percent, it's it's it gets tough but Cool. Yeah. But you guys probably obviously have it down now. Yeah, we got it down yeah. now. Yeah. So it's, so it's we're, one of those things though, when you start something, it's just like, oh, you got to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. You got to figure it out. Yeah. And when you're mixing it and then, then, you know, cause, and also when you mix it, cause we have, we just have like a hand drill and, a, you know, a little spinner and you mix the crap out of it. That reading will be different from when it settles overnight. Damn. So you got to read it once and you got to let it sit. Then you got to read it again. In, like, you know, and test um, it, yeah. yeah, you got to see what the temperature is. And then from the temperature, you got to do your That's calculations. Crazy. And, then do you guys yeah. do like, uh, like you 
pull off like stuff from the like say your shelf and mm. like test it just to see no no, no i'm not so yeah, once it, yeah. once you bottle your notes like, yeah once yeah. you bottle it we're good yeah i mean for the store we can be a little more lenient because it's our store they don't they won't come in and test our stuff we just have to make sure that it's safe to consume yeah, yeah. so we send these products to the lcbo they're they're lab testing and they say okay it's approved to get yeah so like basically if you wanted to you could do like say point one off or whatever mm -hmm. if that's what it was yeah yeah um but yeah. like lc bills just rear, you gotta strict. be yeah, yeah especially too on the smaller guys yeah like us and all yeah, like the, the craft guys yeah probably too yeah they yeah they exactly yeah. they're like so dead nuts because they they can't they can bully you in a way they can say no like take your stuff off the shelf and get it right whereas like i doubt they would say that or even test it to jack daniels or something yeah. like obviously they got jack daniels has the equipment to be dead on accurate yeah, yeah. but Maybe they do. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy, and they, like I can see that though. I can see mm. them like sort of bully people because they have like what tens of thousands of products <laughs> oh on those my shelves. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Just and it's online. like it's and a, people waiting to get on. So yeah, it's just yeah. Like, it's a it's a tough one. Like we're we're in sixty LCBOs right now. That's awesome. Um, and you and you got a quota. You have a quota to meet, and if like for each product too. And if yeah. you're not meeting that, they say, hey. Your product might what get for listed. sales or yeah for damn. sales yeah yeah so you have to push it and promote it as much as you can it's not like the lsb will do that for you yeah the smaller the smaller towns damn, that i didn't know that's us, how it worked like, yeah you have to have a quota for yep. sales so then once and then once you've reached i think it's like once you reach four hundred thousand dollars in sales you can go into the warehouse okay. like the lsb warehouse because right now and they'll start we, holding it yeah they'll start holding it and distribute it throughout ontario yeah. so right now we are direct delivering yeah. all of our products to all these lcbo's Damn. and it's it's gets well it pretty much we're just doing it for like a promotional and advertisement mm -hmm. because we don't make, really make a whole lot with the time of you know like for someone to go drive down to a certain lcbo the, the time the gas mm -hmm. you know all that stuff kind of cuts down the cost but it's all right because we just need to gain those sales yeah, yeah. Take, take a bite onto it and then get into the warehouse the end goal is to for get sure. into the warehouse and once we get there you know You'll have you can, you can maximum have access. distribution, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all over all across Ontario. That's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that's interesting. That's very interesting. And mm -hmm. uh yeah, you're competing with a lot of products, but like yeah, the minute yeah. you start making your name, like people are gonna start coming back. Yeah. Like, well that we, could be people's go to. Honestly, because there's lots of guys that say, you know, I'm a Crown Royal guy, they make fantastic products too, I'm a Forty Creek guy, mm -hmm. whatever, right? And they try our stuff and they say, Nope. Like they, they are loyal. It's like, you know, buying a Samsung or an iPhone. Yeah. Like people, they are dedicated, are dedicated to it. Right. And they, since we're local in, in Ontario, more or less, right. Since we're, you know, a family, small business, yeah. right. We have five employees, mm -hmm. nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, they like that stuff. Yeah. They like it. They like, they, they like going in and talking to the owners and they see that and they like the products because they, because who they're talking to is mm -hmm. making their product. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. I like, like well, I'm awesome. sure with like yeah, Sam yeah. too, you know, talking yeah. to, she's making your food. That, yeah, that's yeah. awesome that, you know, you you have that connection with that, some, yeah. that person that, that you know what they're putting into it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah. That's, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because even when it comes to like, you know, the small business vibe, because right now obviously we're recording DigiHype, which yep. is like my yep. dad's, you know, business. Super and it's the cool. family business. Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's so cool because it's not like a corporate structure no. where like you have the same task every day. Every day is new. Oh, it's God, wild. Yeah, it's just is creative tasks coming yeah, in, yeah. but also dealing with customers. Like mm -hmm. because we're a smaller team, like we have to deal directly with customers. You can't hide behind a screen. Nope. Like these big guys that are just like in a totally different country, yeah. just hiding behind a screen. Yeah. Like, sorry, sir, we can't help they you. They don't no. care about the customer service. They don't care about yeah, that no, stuff. And to me, every customer is the same. They're valuable. Yeah. And yeah. Like when, when someone would call copyright, I pick up. Yeah. It's me. I'm sure the same thing here. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's hey, true. what's up? You yeah. know, talk to the owner and it's just like people love that stuff. Yeah, it's so. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very uh, personal. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So how long have you guys have been here for? So we've been in this location for the last year and a bit. Okay. Um, but we've been around for over five years now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. That's good. You hit that five year mark. That's a tough one. It is. That's it a is. Tough one. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in like our industry, obviously <laughs> probably distillery is the same thing, but like, it's a very competitive, like yeah, no kidding. marketing and yeah. digital marketing is very hip right now. Right. So yep. you have like a lot of these freelancers, you have a lot of these people, you know, overseas selling products and a lot of them yeah. don't do it. They don't have the skills to do it or they'll outsource it. Right. right. So like, yeah, I don't know. There was a need obviously in the market um and then a lot of the companies that do digital marketing they're just so overpriced yeah. it's crazy oh my god it's it's Couldn't nuts imagine. Yeah. yeah so like that's you know a few of the reasons like we do everything in-house um and then affordable products for yeah. businesses that need it mm. so like that's sort of yeah you have to find your niche and yeah. i'm sure you guys did too with your with your products yeah yeah 
you figure it out along the way too. Exactly. And you change and you, you know, you adapt and you figure out what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. It's all part of the journey. It's, yeah. It's awesome. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, yeah. no, it's yeah. sweet. So do you like working in the family business? I like, do. Yeah. And it, well, it has its pros and cons to it. For sure. Um, but yeah, when I first started out, um, you know, the first year, I didn't really know what I was signing up for and mm -hmm. it got super busy, super quick. Yeah. We balling, making all the time. Yeah. You know, uh, Trevor, he was working, he's from Mississauga yeah. too. I went to high school. Yeah, us. yeah. Uh, so is he living up there now too? He's living up there now too. Yeah. So That's he lives cool. in uh, Magneto on, so it's just kind of, uh, west of Sunridge, but, okay. uh, yeah. So he's living up there now too and loving awesome. it. Yeah. You know, God's hunting license, God's fishing license too. So he's like enjoying it. Very cool. Yeah. So taking him out a couple of times for bear hunting, which is pretty That's sweet. That's very cool. But, uh, yeah, you know, like within the first year it was crazy because, um, my dad and my mom were just like going, you know, they were so overwhelmed, so busy of trying course, to pick yeah. up like customers, you know, trying to deal with them and you're dealing, you're working in like a really small work environment yeah. and it's just like pulling your hair out and then, but it's sacrifice, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the sacrifice part of it that right now, now it's all worth it. Yeah, to yeah. me, it's, it's, it was all worth it because we went from a thousand square foot building. Yeah. Now we're in a 7,000 square wow, foot building, right? Nice. Within, yeah. a, within a year and a bit, a year and a half, like all of a sudden we just, boom, moved that, made, made, made that transition because of putting in that hard work. Sacrifice, Sweet. sacrifice a year, sacrifice, you know, your time. Yeah. You know, get uncomfortable and this is, this is what happens. Yeah, man. And so. it, especially like when you're like part of a family business, you feel the highs, you feel the lows, oh, you yeah. feel well, everything. It never, it never turns off yeah. too. And I was living with my parents. And so, you know, you go home and you talk about stuff and sometimes it's good to talk about things. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, I'm like, Oh boy, you yeah. know, when I wasn't really too involved, like I was just doing like the production side, yeah, which is yeah. bottling. I didn't think I'd be so involved because I, um, Trevor and I had another company, but, mm. um, you know, it's just like, Oh, okay. I'm, I don't want to talk about it anymore. But now since you're more involved, more bigger pictures things, yeah. it's like, now it gets really exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's exciting. awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you prefer in the business? Do you prefer like the marketing side, like the mm. the creating, I guess, recipes, yeah. like is, or it's, like production? Like, I, yeah, I love. I you sort of do a little bit of everything. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I have my hand in everything, but I love, I love it all. I love you know, even the accounting stuff to it. Even though I complain and everyone <laughs> hears me yell at the screen a bunch of times because <laughs> numbers aren't lining up, but yeah, yeah. that's just fun. That's just developing your skills more. Um, production side of stuff is really fun. Bottling. When you when you're done a couple hundred bottles, you know, in the day or something like that, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, can this ever can this end now? Yeah, you yeah. Because because all these are done by hand. Yeah, that's so you that's know we crazy. have a machine and I label every single one of these by hand. Damn. The seal on it, it's all by hand, you know. So we're not at that point where we're running the machine yet. Yeah, yeah. So bottling's fun when you're doing one two days a week. Um, production side, obviously, making all this stuff is is fun, and then just like uh, just the growing of it, you know, yeah. changing. Like we have uh, big plans for the next year and a half. We're, com we're completely renovating. Sweet. And so when you kind of come into our storefront, um, there's like, our storefronts here, our warehouse is like kind of right beside it. Mm -hmm. uh, to, and then we're actually cutting the warehouse in half okay. and we're condensing all of our distillery equipment into one area. Oh, okay. And then we're having a window from the store that you can look into the- That's very cool. Yeah, so you can look into it and then that opens up for tours because we don't do tours yet. Yeah, brewery tours yeah. are always good, yeah. So we can do our distillery tour and, I'm, and then I'm buying all the equipment too. So we're ramping up. We have um, a couple stills that are about 200 400 liters so now i'm, I'm going to be getting one that's about 600 gallons damn so yeah huge. yeah so it, it's gonna be massive it's so you can be, do more like production Is yeah like yeah more production more, more volume yeah more efficient um and then that's gonna be that's gonna be massive like you know it's gonna be a stack that's 14 feet high damn it's gonna be like 7 18 feet long that's like, wild it's gonna be crazy so yeah so that's like that's kind of that phase but like that's the part that i like it's yeah. like all of a sudden you're you're doing your regular thing every single day, but then you're growing and you're working hard, and Very then cool. you're growing, and then it's like okay, now we can use that growth and make things better. That's awesome. And get you more bigger. That's so. very cool. So like, how are you yeah. guys growing? Like, what is your like primary like say distribution or like marketing tactic? You going like Ooh. word of mouth a lot of word, the time? Yeah. So like, yeah. So for, for the first because I know you're saying half, earlier yeah. that like you guys didn't really have a marketing thing. No. You just started creating <laughs> stuff and yeah. just no, we because we didn't know what was going to come yeah. from this, right? Like we were buying mason jars from Walmart. Where yeah. everything was just from like small batch stuff, which yeah. is still our small batch, like yeah. compared to the big guys. But yeah, we had nothing. Like we had no website, no signs on the on our dirt roads. Yeah. I don't know how people found us. <laughs> it's like crazy. it's not like it's if you don't know where you're like if you type in my or the address like if you type that in yeah it's, it's gonna take you somewhere else yeah so people were like 
were driving into other people's driveways really? asking where our distillery was. And then we put up these little signs like this big, yeah. you know, um, towards like the end of the, or middle of that summer of 2017. And then like, then people started, like, hey, you should really get some signs. Yeah, I know, but there's yeah. so much other stuff that we got to do. Yeah, yeah. And like we had, yeah, no Instagram, no website, no Facebook. Yeah. And it was just word of mouth. Um, and that's why I always, always thank our loyal, and thank you, loyal customers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like our loyal, our customers are like the best. I'm sure you could say the same. Yeah, but it's like sure. they, they made us to where we are. So that's why we, we always give back to the community. That's why I love the small, that's very cool. small town community. Yeah. It's a community of a thousand people, you know. It's wild. And man. It's crazy. So like everyone knows everyone. But we always give back and we always try to like, you know, thank everyone and promote local, you know, because we get a lot of traffic through. So yeah. we actually just um, made a deal with this guy. Um, he makes pizzas on the side okay. and he's going to be making pizzas every weekend. And cool. it's just like one other local business that we can help promote because of cool. how great our, lo our, cu our loyal customers were. That's so, awesome, man. Yeah. That's yeah. very cool. I like it. I love the growth. I love the journey. That's yeah, sweet, man. Yeah, that's, it's, it's yeah. very cool. Like oh. just to think that like you've you guys have done all that stuff and it hasn't even mm -hmm. been that long. No, no, there's a lot of stuff to do still. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to see what happens. For yeah. Sure. So, like, and then, so we're, we're kind of getting some marketing plans going down. Sweet. Trying Dude. to get the Instagram going, the Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, website. All that stuff will help. Yeah. Yeah. All the website. And then that'll just help, you know, like everything outside of small town vibe. Of course, yeah. So like the GTA and everything where not people, a lot of people get the small town vibe. Yeah. So you got to promote, you got like the product has to sell itself of in course. a way. So, um, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Good for yeah. you. Good for you. It's crazy. Um, so let's talk about some other stuff too. Let's talk about like hunting and stuff like that. Yeah, You're ooh, super into yeah. hunting, the yes, outdoors. Yes. Tell yes. me about what type of hunting do you do? Like what sort of stuff? Yeah, everything in like everything. So my, well, mainly what I do is I, I hunt for white tailed deer, okay. hunt for black, uh, black bear, and then um, moose too. So moose is, I have, I've only gone on one hunt with my brother. Okay. I went out in, uh, to Quebec, but to get a, um, uh, a license to hunt moose, like in Ontario is pretty tough. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like, it, you, it's a draw. So it's a lottery. So you, I, I submitted my application. So you submit, you know, about a month ago and then it's with a lottery because they, they only give out so many tags in okay. each area. So every, uh, do you fish at all? I do fish. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you know how like it, the area yeah. zones are of all course, split yeah, up. Yeah, you have same to thing with hunting. And stuff, yep. yeah. So same thing with hunting is like it's split up into uh, WMU, so wildlife management units okay. is what they call it. So and then based on that population, <clears throat> based on that population, um, they only give out so many tags. Yep. So all the hunters, you know, you can for uh, moose, you apply in a group or by yourself. It's mm -hmm. harder. You apply for a certain area and then yeah. if you get a tag you get a tag if you don't you don't yeah yeah so i I've, I've been trying to apply the last three years now haven't got one but i i do want to pursue that yeah yeah um but yeah mainly it's uh, white tail and black bear um That's because sweet, yeah, i can get tags every year and hunt them so um, like how many how many can you get like if you get a tag how many can you get one Is one a year one and yeah one? so okay. black bear you, there's two seasons a spring um which just ended and then a fall season okay um and that so the spring season just ended i didn't get one I uh, didn't get a big a big boar, which is a male um, black bear. Yeah, I yeah. didn't get a big one to come by. Um, yeah. And then white tails in the fall starts October, ends in December, and then same thing, only one. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, and man. you and most of the time, like you can apply for a doe tag, which is a female deer. Yeah. And uh, but that's, that's oh, so they break them down into like categories. Yeah, yeah, because it's all con it's all like um, it's all like about like conservation stuff. Yeah, and stuff, population yeah. growing it, and yeah. like a lot of people, they don't know that they don't yeah, know like yeah. you know hunting a older uh, more mature animal that's past its prime like you know a buck or a boar yeah. you know which is the male of that of the bear and deer species um once they've done out of their prime they they do they actually do more harm to the the population of the deer um being like not being there than yeah, being yeah. there um so killing those animals actually helps that's what I, yeah and that's yeah. what like i've learned a lot from like joe rogan's podcast yeah, cause yeah. he always talks about hunting he's obviously yeah. into, into hunting because one of the things i didn't know before is that like especially for black bears it, they use it to control the population mm -hmm. or else they'll like eat everything yeah the, the, the boars <laughs> will just destroy yeah, everything because yeah, the boars like the the big boars they'll they'll kill their cubs yeah if they, if they know another male is coming they'll kill them They'll, they'll wipe them out. They'll eat their own and no problem. It's wild, and they'll fight man. And yeah, they'll kill each other. Like the the deer and stuff, like they don't grow the antlers for show. Yeah. They, they grow them to stab and fight other males. It's so they can It's dominance. Yeah, it's just yeah. this, this survival. So, you know, um, that's like those bears. Those bears and even bigger boars, they yeah. like, you know, um, deer, moose, uh, they, they drop their, like, so they'll be, they'll be pregnant. Yeah. And they drop their yearlings um, in around the springtime. Right. And Very black cool. bears will eat them. 
Wow. So they'll they'll get Damn. a scent from a deer or doe that's uh you know about to drop a baby. Yeah. And they'll follow them until they drop it. This baby is like is useless because it's like doesn't have muscle development. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just brand new. it's like yeah. open season, right? So it's just oh perfect, thank you. I'll eat you and get some Damn. free like a free meal. That's crazy. So that's another thing for the spring black bear hunt is they brought that back into Ontario was so they can control the numbers because so they, they were just eat everything. yeah. So they don't eat everything, and then you could, it's all about balance. Yeah. It's just about balance. That's wild, yeah. man. So where do you go hunting? Like, do you go like further up north? Like, no, you go to none of it, man. Nah. <laughs> You're already so far up north. Yeah, I might as well just keep going. <laughs> yeah, just man. Keep going, checking up. Yeah. Go to like, yeah. I mean, I wish that'd yeah. be awesome. That'd be I, cool. yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's it. That's the end goal is to go out of province and to hunt, you know, yeah, into yeah. those crazy Explore. destinations. Yeah, I want to go to uh, the states, like you know, Oregon or Montana, hunt some elk. That's like you know, Joe. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's always cooking up el- elk, and I was like. It looks delicious. I want to try some. Yeah, it looks delicious. Um, yeah, I hunt uh, just on my property. Actually, okay. everything's on my property. So, uh, where I used to live, which is the first um, uh, uh, facility of our distillery, yeah. um, we have some land there that was actually our cottage. Okay. And for we've had it for thirty-two years now. Wow. Uh, I just moved up three, no, four years ago, I guess. Um, my parents moved up five years ago, and then that's where I grew up hunting, fishing, very cool, loving man. every day. That's just awesome. Like, yeah, yeah. So, and that right, right there, right in my backyard, is you know what's where I try and grow the, uh, the population where I can. I also I'm a trapper too. So, so what is, what is trapping? You're trapping small like animals, fur bearing like animals. So stuff? beavers, otters, uh, mink uh raccoon squirrels the odd time damn so, that's very cool yeah man. a lot of trapping well for me at least it's it's all about the heritage thing yeah. you know it's like and the eco balance of the ecosystem yeah. you know you have too much of one population they're gonna suffer they're yeah. gonna die there's good, like too many beavers they'll, they're gonna die of starvation they're gonna spread diseases and they're just gonna do more harm yeah. so that's why people they just see the end result they yeah. just see like hey you're just killing something. Why are you killing it? It's yeah. like they, they see no other purpose beside that. And it's like, you know, you got to look a little bit of bigger picture yeah. at what you're actually doing with the ecosystem. You know, you have too many otters. Yeah. They'll just destroy and they, they'll destroy the beaver systems and everything. Yeah. And then the beavers will go away and they'll die. And a lot of people don't realize that like hunting's like more humane than factory farming. Oh, it's like, it's yeah. a totally oh, different yeah. thing. Yeah. Like we've all seen those documentaries with mm-hmm. factory farming. It's not like that. No, like it's people not. that hunt usually like, an, like probably 95% of the people, like they care for animals, yeah. but you're going to oh, get yeah. the, obviously the 5% that are just knuckleheads. They are. Way, yeah. And they ruin that it. Are trophy hunting. Yeah. And stuff. They yeah. ruin it yeah. for everybody. So. But like the rest of the people, like, you know, obviously like you're super outdoorsy, like you love animals mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, yeah. It's about just, respect yeah you know, man that's, it's awesome though because like, like what those animals go through it's like we can yeah like humans are soft like, yeah it's, humans it's are soft. You, you can't do that like yeah. you can't go through um like the winters and stuff that these animals have gone through but yeah. i respect them tremendously i watch them tremendously yeah killing is part of hunting and it's it's tough but you know I, I think about that. Yeah, uh, I'm sure a lot of people that cut into that steak don't even think twice about, hey, you just killed that animal. Of course, yeah. you took part into that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and to me, I've accepted that, and to me, I want to get that meat and get it for myself yeah. because that's honor in my in yeah. my opinion, and that's just the best way possible, the most most ethical way too, like yep. of getting the most highest quality, cleanest protein you can out love there. It, yeah. Like the meat that you get off of it is just dense. It's super red meat. It's just delicious. Yeah. And um the the animals no steroids, nope. no nothing. Yep. And it's just you know exactly Natural. where it came yeah. from. Like when I when I butchered um so actually Trev was uh was was part of this um like my first or my first uh, bear kill with a bow in the fall of twenty Seventeen, I guess. So yeah, crossbow or like bow and arrow? Compound, yeah, bow and arrow, compound. That's, really? That's all Damn, I shoot. Yeah. Standard. Yeah, that's all I shoot. It's like the old technology from compound bows or from like a recurve is just yeah. ridiculous. So it's like you can get deadly accurate and stuff. Really? Oh yeah, like you get. Like, I thought I it was always it. harder than like a crossbow. It, uh, like, it yeah. is harder. Yeah, yeah. Crossbows, crossbows really is easy to tune up, you know, because they just shoot the same way yeah, all it's the time. Standard, like on the. Yeah, I yeah, guess and they. I don't know. I don't know. Because it's the speed too. So like you can because you can crank like a 150 pound pole which is a lot and then you can crank that bow up and then like that thing you can shoot 60 yards Damn. like no problem like which is which is pretty far for a bow shot yeah um to be accurate and you can get that dead nuts because you can put a scope onto it yeah, yeah whereas compound bow you just have pins so they're just okay. they're just floatable pins and then those pins so you draw back and you have to anchor so if you if i draw back and i move my anchor just a little bit that will change the shot Damn. If my my lead hand, you know, if if I torque it one yeah. way or another, holding that, that's gonna change the shot. 
the yeah. further I get. It's all technique. It's, eh? it's all technique. It's all just like the same repetition and just, just technique. That's what it comes down to. That's yeah. very cool. Yes, it's tough. But. So uh, you're probably practicing and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I try to practice as much as I can. I want to practice every day. That's the end goal. Mm-hmm. Time is kind of tough, especially in the summertime. I also coach the cross. So oh, yeah, sweet. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, so I coach That's the midget cool. team, um, oh, Huntsville Hawks. Uh, nice. Yeah, we won the championship last awesome, year. So man. yeah, That's so sweet. they're they're awesome, wicked. Um, so that kind of takes up some of my time as well. A part of you know owning a new house and yeah. then just relaxing, chilling and that's awesome, man. That's yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So it's fun. That's cool. So, so you're doing uh so, so let's talk about like fitness and stuff, like staying healthy. Like I know you run and stuff too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've been on the run grind. Going? Like you doing trails good. and stuff. Yeah. So we, well, I just, I live, you know, on windy dirt road. Yeah. Um, so I just run that, nice. you know, I, uh, last little bit, I've been in a competition with my cousin and my brother, uh, my two other brothers nice. to see if we can get 80 kilometers in a month. Nice, um, man. Yeah, yeah. That's so sweet. I've been I've been hammering out the miles uh, these last couple of weeks to really catch up. I'm at what am I at now? Uh, 44, I think. Last yeah, couple 44? weeks, damn, bro. Yeah, yeah. So you're going far. So last Saturday, which you. I guess would have been, I was at 15. Damn. So then I, I gained, you know, you stepped it up. Yeah, 30, 30 kilometers, and and like it's tough because like it, they're really hilly and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. you know, I'm slowing. Oh yeah, it's slowing down a little bit. But yeah, I tried to. So last, so. Yeah, 2019 has been a rough one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, trying to get back into like my whole fitness, um, mm-hmm. you know, fitness part, running, being healthy, being active, working out and stuff like yeah. weights, running, shooting. That's kind of what I want to cool. focus on. So, Kevin Haynes, I don't know if you've yeah, he's yeah, on yeah. Joe Rogan. Yeah, I'm really super inspired he's by a him. Monster. Yeah, everyone that knows me he's knows a, like he does ultras like, too, right? Yo, yeah, 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 he's yeah. ultra. Yeah, he's, he's he's insane. He's a, beast. He's a monster. So, Every, yeah, everyone knows like everyone that knows me knows like I like a crush on this guy. Like if I if I met Cameron Haynes, I'd probably pass out. I have the same crush on uh, David Goggins. Yeah, David yeah, Goggins I, I saw you repost that. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, I love that guy so oh much. Oh my god! I, I watched that video. I'm like, what am I doing right now? I should be outside. I should yeah. be running. Let's Literally, go. like yeah. what, what's happening? Yeah. So oh man, I know, I know how you feel, and like that's that's it. Like that's yeah. it right there, and that's what you know. That's what it's all about. And like, yeah, you you run too. Like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. You bust out like. 8k yeah. like it's no big deal yeah yeah so like i've been getting back into yeah, like, running the last like yeah. uh a little bit mm-hmm. i've been freaking recovering from a knee injury like the last like week oh, or so yeah. um so i gotta take it easy from running yeah i've been yeah. doing like the soccer mom workout oh <laughs> so, yeah like i'm doing uh i'm doing elliptical okay and, hey, that's all <laughs> and right the, and that's the stairmaster right. that's what i call hey, it it's better than the people sitting <laughs> no, on the couch no. and dude the stairmaster is nothing. serious bro. yeah <laughs> yeah so i'm trying to rehab my injury um mm. But uh, yeah, I've been uh, I recently got into duathlons, which is uh, the running and biking. Oh yeah. So like the one that I did recently, um, which was two k run, twenty uh, k bike, and then well, oh, it was nineteen k bike, yeah, and then a five k run. Okay. So it's 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 fast. That's a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. fast. It's a lot. Um, but it's good, man. Crazy mental. Yeah, mental man. discipline right there. You really holy. learn like a lot about yourself, especially yeah. that last run. You're just like, damn. Yeah, holy shit. I got a man up. Yeah, right yeah. Now. Suck like, it up. Yeah, keep I going. Use momentum mm-hmm. and yeah, it's very cool. But like the minute you start getting to long distance running, it's good, man. I know. Oh, it's it's, awesome. it's therapeutic. It's, it's different. And I. You know, when you do it every like couple like once a week or two, you're like, oh, this sucks. Everything's so far. Yeah. But once it just becomes part of your routine, it's yeah. like it's enjoyable. It's yeah. it's nice. It's fun. It's you know. Do you listen to anything when you're running? Like, what do you I do. Play? So well, I don't have headphones in because I like to like hear how I breathe. Okay. So yeah, I just I just play mostly Eminem. Okay, nice. nice. <laughs> I have like yeah, I just like download a Spotify. Awesome. Eminem, just I just cruise. That's sweet, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, I usually listen to like audiobooks or like podcasts. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I gosh, I should do that. It's good. It's actually really good. Yeah, it takes your mind off some stuff too while you're just. It's totally doing different than listening to music. Yeah, I, I find hmm. especially for the longer runs or bikes. Well, I don't do it for biking, um, but for running, yep. I find it's like very helpful because like sometimes the runs get boring, especially yeah. if you're doing it, like road, yeah. like trail running yeah. is sick. Like, yeah, but you live up north, so like the dirt it's, roads, which is yeah, too yeah, too. exactly. Yeah, so you got some wines and stuff. Yeah, but. yeah. But if you're doing like the roads, it's just like, oh man, oh, dude, this is so boring. Just same thing. Yeah. Cars going by. Yeah. Okay. So like, if you're listening to something, it's just like, okay, keeps yeah. your mind yeah. like active, and yeah, mm-hmm. that's sweet, man. That's yeah. That's dope. So yeah, just trying to stay healthy, and you know, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the goal my brother and I have 
is to actually do our first marathon by this year. Very cool. So he's been, and he's a big guy. So he's like me times two. Okay. So like, I, I'm not big, but he's, th- that's the size. So he's yeah, like yeah. a big guy. He's uh, a big boy. Six, three, Damn. six, four, two, he's, thirty. He's basically two of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's like massive and he's running. He's got Damn, like good for him. 60 cl- K clicked in already. Damn, and yeah. Man. He's killing it. So yeah. Like the thing for running that I've noticed is that like you, if the minute you do a lot though you have to relax a little bit you don't want to overuse your knees yeah like, yeah that's yeah. how i got this my, it was just overuse yeah injury. Like, so what was it for you like uh i just did way too much yeah and then <laughs> like, just like the muscles kind of yeah yeah so like i think i just uh probably just uh strained a tendon yeah, on the yeah. side um and it's definitely just from overuse mm-hmm. just like from pushing myself way too hard yeah and then in the race that i was doing like I'm going to go all out. I'm not going to like, hold course. Back. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I'm yeah. going for it. I, I don't care. Like whatever. Gotta do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that didn't help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me, but, it's, it's my IT band. It's like super yes. tight. Yeah. And it's like always like, I, sometimes I can't extend my leg all the way. Yeah. Yeah. So I was wondering, I was wondering if maybe the same thing with you is like, I couldn't, I can't extend my knee all the way if, unless I stretch it out, really work yeah. on it. Then I can, you should try, um, maybe knee brace is good too. Like that's what yeah, I'm wearing now. I should. It kind of sucks to run in. Mm-hmm. Um, but even I've been trying like a few different things. I'm super into like experimenting, especially yeah. with like recovery. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna like just do like what everybody's doing and yeah. then they have knee injuries for the rest of their life. Like, <sighs> no, scared about that. no, yeah. like I'm freaking gonna <laughs> fix this. Yeah. So I've been trying the KT tape, which is um like this blue tape. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. 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 So like a lot of athletes wear it. Um, it's basically called kinesiology tape. Hmm. You put it on and it's kind of like a compression. Right. It feels like if you're wearing compression pants and they're okay. tight. So there's different ways, like depending on your injury, yeah. you can put it on different ways mm-hmm. and it actually feels pretty good mm. for working out. Like it, like for the way that I have it, it's sort of, so I don't overextend it and it's like pretty good. Yeah. Like yeah. you can feel it, like it feels tight. So you don't overextend it. Yeah. You know, like a limit yeah. or something. Yeah. And then, um, the other day I did a cryotherapy too. Joe Rogan talks oh, about it a lot. I don't know if cryo- you cryotherapy. So that's like hmm. the ice, like the, uh, super oh, cold one. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I tried it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I uh, like my knee was killing me. So I'm just like, damn, yeah. I just got to try it. Give it a go. Yeah. So I tried it. Um, and basically if you don't really know about it, it's like you step in this chamber. It's, I don't know how it's hard to explain. Yeah. It's like, you know, like in those space movies where yeah. like, you go into like a chamber and yeah. like, you're standing up. That's yeah. basically what it's like. Oh. Um, your head's above it. Um, they pump nitro, uh, nitrogen in it hmm. and it's uh, negative 140 degrees Celsius. <laughs> So it's oh, super cold. Holy shit. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's serious. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's three minutes. It's only three minutes. Yeah. Uh, only three yeah, minutes. It's only three minutes. It's minus you 140. It. You feel it. <laughs> and then you rotate in it. Yeah. Um, and dude, by like the two minute yeah. mark, you're just like feeling it. It's oh, like, God damn. Gosh. It's so cold. Yeah. So did it work? Did it help? It felt a lot better. Yeah. After. Yeah. Hmm. I'm actually very surprised. Yeah. I did it probably three days ago now. Oh yeah. It feels a lot better. Damn. Sunridge, we need to get one of those. Yeah. Because, like, we don't have Dude, any of that like, stuff up there. <laughs> I found one place in Mississauga that has it. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm sure it's, like, the equipment's probably pretty expensive. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I think it's very niche, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, like, mm. it, honestly, like, it's 45 bucks. It's super expensive. That's for the first visit. Then it goes yeah. to, like, 60 bucks. It's super expensive. Yeah. But I was just like, I'm going to try it. I have an injury now. Yeah. Might as G- well try it. Give it a go. Yeah. Give it, get a review, an opinion on it. Yeah. And off you go but yeah. dude it's crazy like no you can kidding. feel your body like tensing up like you're flexing because your oh, body's just like I... reacting to the yeah cold, yeah right? yeah and you're just like holy shit yeah. what's going on what's then, going on then by like the two minute mark you can feel yourself it feels like you're burning yeah because it's so cold whoa it's, it's weird it's a weird holy sensation. i gotta try that out yeah man it's it's sweet yeah. it's very cool I, I would definitely do it again yeah yeah oh yeah I don't know. For recovery, it's, it's a very interesting thing. I've even tried like float tanks before. Have you done that? No. The sensory deprivation. No. That's yeah. Cool. I, I heard, well, I've heard about that, but yeah, we don't have that up. Yeah. We need to get these things. Yeah. I yeah. need to grow Sunridge. You need to grow these small yeah, towns yeah. and get like, or even go to, companies. or even go to Toronto. Yeah. Or, yeah I could make or a trip down. Saga, <laughs> like, yeah. They, they have them. Um, cool. Let's uh, talk about some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you have any crazy hunting stories? I just, I have that on my list. Uh, yeah, like, actually. So like yeah, last year, um, last year was, oh yeah, crazy. So, uh, I hunt, I hunt black bears, um, on the ground. Okay. So a lot of people, they hunt in the tree stands and everything and, okay. and all that stuff. So they can, you know, so they're above the bears because you could get, um, a sow coming in, which is a female black okay. bear. You could get a sow coming in with cubs, which yeah. I had cubs coming around this year and you could get them to come in. 
and the mom, mom bear could get really them. defensive and could attack you, right? I'm sure everyone has seen um, bears attacking people on yeah. on videos. I mean, black bears are pretty docile. They're not really, they're more intimidated of you than, you know, the other way around. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so it's the last day of the season. I have a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> Do they, are there grizzlies up where you are? No. In Ontario? There's no, there's, there's no, no grizzlies, grizzlies no. in Ontario. They're right? color phased black, uh, black bears, so they might yeah. be brown. That's super rare, but no, there's just... that's more towards, I guess, the west. Yeah, yeah. So once you hit like uh, probably probably BC, Alberta, I feel like the yeah, mountains, that's where they are. that, okay, m- that mountain territory, sense. yeah, yeah okay. west coast too has a lot of so there's a difference between grizzly bears and brown bears. So, uh, brown bears are inland, so they're the same species, yeah. And grizzly okay. bears are coast, no. Oh, I forget. I have to Google this or something. We need a guy like Joe. Yeah, Logan. I know. I need, I need <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, yeah, Jamie, right? Jamie, look this up. <laughs> look this up. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it's one or the other. I forget, and I should know this, but I think it's or is brown bear coast? Brown bears are coast. Yeah, brown bears are cro- are coastal bears. Okay. So they they get the the fish from the you know the protein from the okay. fish and everything. So they actually are genetically bigger. So and the same species, the grizzly bear. They're mm-hmm. just inland, so they eat the berries and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they're gonna be smaller yeah you know but yeah you can see the difference when you see pictures yeah and stuff like yeah that. their paws are freaking yeah. massive yeah. um so, yeah so what were you saying yeah so story? so last year um so still we're starting to pick up i didn't have much time to like you know i bait the bears in that's okay. the best that's the best way to do it people oh you bait the bears oh my god you know yeah. why don't you go track them well track them, you let's see you try to track a black bear in the in the thick dense forest yeah, yeah it's just it's hard and you know it's 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 not possible yeah so you, you bait them in it's more of a controlled area and you know kind of where they're coming into yeah, and yeah. uh you know it's up to you to like figure out your moves and to figure out you know if i'm on the ground so i kind of sit further back see them come in then i kind of stock in and find a good shooting position and then uh That's take crazy. a shot so uh um, seems terrifying <laughs> it, yeah it, yeah last year was, yeah so this story was yeah. pretty pretty wild so it was the last day of the season june 15th um i threw out so i went in the morning i made like it's called bear crack um i make up so i heat up marshmallows uh jello powder maple syrup you cook that up really uh, yeah just like an aluminum pan you cook that up and that smell just bears just smell that for days really yeah and they just they just love that so i had a couple bears coming by i had a sow and i had a boar that okay. like you know he's a big guy and so I, you know, let, put that down in the morning. I was like, I don't know if anything's going to come. I'll sit anyways, last day, yeah. whatever. I sit out. I literally, like, I am not even prepared. Like, it kind of sounds bad. I, I put up a chair, and I think there's, like, a trail, and then there's the bait spot. So I'm sitting in the middle of the trail just like this. I'm just, like, you know, just kind of looking. You know, I see some animals walking around, yeah, observing yeah. stuff. And then all of a sudden I look to my right, and a sow is coming in. You know, she's about 20 yards from me. Okay. She's about 250 pounds. Damn. Bear just kind of walking in. I was like, oh, cool. All right. So she goes up, you know, goes to the bait pals. She just starts sitting down. And I was like, you know, I'm not, I don't want to shoot it. Yeah. I don't want to shoot her. Uh, she's smaller. Let her grow. She's a sow. Yeah. You can tell too. And like, so I don't want to, I want, I need the meat, but I'd rather grow the population. Yeah, yeah. So I, I watched her for about 15, 20 minutes. How do you know it's a, female so you can tell by their facial structure okay so usually the boars they'll start to grow a wider facial structure so you can kind of tell from their their ears to their eyes are more Very outwards cool. yeah. yeah and that's how you can tell kind of how old a bear is well give or take you know the maturity of a bear is like you know you can see the wideness of and the structure and how their bellies hang in and yeah, just yeah. everything right so yeah so this one kind of comes in and she sits down so i'm just watching her i got my bow my arrow knocked up which is like you know loaded and I'm just sitting watching her. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, I hear just, <sighs> oh my god, right, coming through the bush. I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Oh right? And I'm, and I'm, it's god. just me. Like it, I just have a bow and I have a knife. Right? That's it. And all of a sudden, right down the trail, so behind me, the, the sow's in front oh of me. Behind god. me is this black bear. You know, a big boar, kind of coming down like this, kind of. And then he's smelling, kind of coming up trail. Yeah. So what? I'm, and I'm I'm down I'm upwind of him. Are you I by guess. yourself? I'm just by myself. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't have a GoPro too. I didn't videotape this, but it would have been crazy. I lost it for a while, but um, yeah. So uh, so I'm I'm upwind of him. So what what mature animals will do is wherever they want to go, they'll get downwind of it and smell, and the wind will push the smell and see if anything is that unusual, and they can smell. They can know stuff that's there. Mm-hmm. So I guess I, I had a pretty good scent. He's behind me, so I'm like. 
oh crap, right? So I actually get out from my chair. I start kind of crawling, you know, crouched crawling towards him to put on a stock. And then I stop. I'm like, oh shit, wait, there's another bear behind me. So I have two bears on both sides no of me. Way. Yeah. So I turn around and she's kind of like, like this looking at me eating some food. The other one's kind of they're the big guy. So he's, I judged him. He's about 400 pounds. God and I'm like, damn. so I'm like, like this with my bow knocked, right? My release. So I look at the boar, I look back at her and I'm like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> right. And I'm crazy. looking back and forth. And then I was like, fuck, I gotta make a stock. So I try to make a stock and then the boar, he turns around. I was like, no, I thought he, I thought he was just going to walk away. Yeah. So he kind of turns around. So say the bait piles, I guess behind me at this point, but so he, he turns around and takes like a big turn. And he kind of, and then he actually comes into the bay pile. So it kind of worked out. So he just wanted, he wanted to smell what was, you know, yeah. downwind of him before he went up. But I guess having that sow there mm -hmm. and another bear in a fresh bay pile, he kind of Recovered was like, ah, yeah, something. he's like, there's something there, but I'm not too sure. I'll still kind of go in. So he took like a longer route. Mm -hmm. He came, um, so now, so now he's, they're both in front of me, but the sow is about, 25 yards he is probably 60 yards and kind of making his way up to the bait and then all of a sudden that whole time he kind of comes up to the bait goes on his hind legs God goes damn. up goes down goes up and then goes down again and he and then he goes back he goes back away from the bait i'm like Fuck, like what are you doing I was yeah. like, no come on come on and he comes back up he starts scratching his back on the tree okay. too which is i was like <laughs> I just look, you know, like that's just awesome, but okay. And then he, you know, and he backs back down. So then he kind of, then he comes back up to the bait pile. So I was like, game on, perfect, right? And right where, right where, the, where it is, I'm kind of on this hill. So I, um, I don't have a great shot when he's on his four legs. Okay. So um, ideally, when you're hunting, you want a, a broad, sh broad side shot is is like the money shot. So that is when it's like their head, you know, front legs, body back legs like the standard like that like yep there. that's standard yeah. and where you want to shoot that is right behind that shoulder blade okay that's where you want to shoot it so th that's the ideal shot yeah yeah, yeah. so and I, I couldn't get that because of that hill so then all of a sudden so he just starts getting up going back down again still like looking like something's there and he's like i don't know what's there yeah so i was like oh i gotta shoot him when he's standing up yeah. right so i ranged him 30 yards away went up i drew back on him boom went down it's like shit didn't go, didn't go back up oh, so i had geez. to let down my bow and all of a sudden i was like, okay next time he's up i gotta take a shot okay just double check my range finder 30 yards perfect went up i drew whoop, drew back yeah. on him and then he just was like this i just released the trigger yeah boom right through the middle really? of him. he dropped that was the quickest kill i ever, had, I wow. ever saw in my life he he went 15 yards um when bears die they have a death roar okay. they like roar and scream and it was really? like, it was so loud and he, he died instantly wow. like he died he ran 15 yards and that was it like it was the most ethical kill like he had like, like no suffrage at all That's crazy. like he just he, it was just merciful wow. he went down and that was it that's that's nice. done and yeah so that was that was a pretty intense story so did the the girl scatter yeah like, she 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 walked she went away so i i just left for a bit made sure like she kind of just took off yeah, yeah. um but then i went back and then he was he was done oh. um i found my arrow later too it uh it actually like so it ba went through. yeah busted through him all the way through this other wow. side actually the the tail end of my arrow stayed into him for a wow. bit so and when he fell and rolled over snapped my arrow Damn. so it completely snapped in half but it was just Whatever I, I I don't know I usually keep the arrows just for sentimental purposes yeah, so yeah. I don't reuse them, but yeah he, that was the quickest kill I've ever seen That's like in my life man. way better than because you know arrows and shooting a bow they you kill an animal on hemorrhage yeah. on the damage whereas gun is all shock yeah you know so he had he had no idea what was going on he just he he heard something he just felt it felt, boom and then boom. he was just That's crazy, he was out man. yeah. So, that's wild yeah it was it was cool dude that's was, a very scary situation though you're by is. yourself there's mm -hmm. two bears there yep yep and then there could wild. be another one kind of coming in you yeah, have no or idea cubs or something yeah somewhere. yeah it's just like it's wild and then i, I was like that was, was definitely like my one of my like craziest stories that i've had that's it's wild just, yeah it's, damn so yep. do you usually hunt alone or mm -hmm. yeah do you yep. ever go with people sometimes yeah um i'll like i hunt turkey with um good group of friends um that i coach with mm -hmm. um they, they have good like we don't have a lot of turkeys in my area yeah. but just in bracebridge they have a good amount of birds i didn't get one this year i put on like a 200 yard stock wow. on a on a turkey and i, I ended up missing it missing it but 
uh yeah i, I go i go with them sometimes uh, i take trevor out sometimes to go sure. you know uh, we went for whitetail a couple times he's just getting into it so just getting him out realizing the equipment that he needs yeah, and everything yeah. Uh, I took them out for bear, but like this year, but the bugs were terrible. Yeah, I could not get them off. Like we had not fun. these thermocells or like mosquito repellents, and they just. What is a thermocell? Is uh, it it's just like a. a uh, yeah, it's a, it's a repellent. So you got like a. Just turn whatever. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all good. Um, so yeah, it's just a repellent. So, um, so you just it's like a little what cartridge. You slide that in, turn it on, sparks just burns like a. Uh, like like uh citronella yeah something like that yeah so it's like scent free and just burns that yeah. yeah yeah and then it actually it helps a lot but we only had one and i think it was just the timing bugs, yeah. yeah just too many bugs that's crazy so. so when you go for that like smaller stuff are you using the bow as well or do you ever yep. use gun uh, you... i'll use some guns uh, here and there you know um but mainly i like bow i just like the challenge of it yeah. so i just try to not as successful obviously yeah. but it's all part of it it's all part yeah. of the challenge you obviously so. have to have a license for your bow Nope. Or no, just nope. for a gun, you yeah. have to have a license. Gun, you have to have a license. You got to have your restricted license. It's all, it's a mandatory course, yeah. uh, you know, a test at the end of it and everything. So that's very cool. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking about going to my first firing range. Uh, right on. Yeah. In July. So nice. Yeah. With some cousins. Yeah. And stuff. Oh, it's fun. I've never been. And I've yeah. always wanted to like, just try it just to see like mm -hmm. what a gun feels like. It's, it's powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. And it's like, whoa, you know, yeah. it, it, uh, the higher caliber ones definitely like, you know they'll they'll hit the, that recoil is nuts but it's yeah it's it's fun it's it's really um oh, it, it is fun it gets your blood going it's something different and yeah, it's you yeah. know all gun owners you know that actually have guns and do the proper training they're all good you know people yeah. are always like oh we shouldn't have guns this and that yeah stuff to say for someone like people up north you know they shouldn't have guns or oh whatever. yeah because well, it's like oh well, defending themselves yeah like, there's coyotes there's bears there's wolves and all that stuff yeah. yeah coyotes and wolves will pick off dogs like no problem yeah. and chickens and stuff i woke up one morning i had 22 little meat birds um just like you raise them up for actually like for eating purposes okay. and uh oh coyote kill them all Wow. Kill them all. I looked around. It was just like a war zone, just Some dead massacre, chickens. Yeah. Eh? And he came back to like pick them up. And I think what he was doing was getting ready for the winter time where he would like bury a bunch of the chickens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so he, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Damn. That's wild. Yeah. That, that's, that's crazy. That's very interesting, man. That's, yeah. that's wild. I've always wanted to try hunting. So when I'm ready, I will let you know. All right. We'll go so, out. Yeah. I, I don't Hell know. Yeah. I've always wanted to try it. Like, yeah. It just seems it's, like it's, a, it's an enlightening experience. It is. It is. And it's a. Uh, it really puts not not puts your mind at ease but it's just it, things to, like make sense you know yeah. and it's the it's honestly the best way to get your to get your meat and it's like the only way of knowing you know what happened to that animal taking it out yourself taking it out of that ecosystem yourself and then you're providing you're yeah, providing yeah. that meat and it's just like there's just no better way i share all my meat with family friends and everything and it's just like there's no better way to get your protein yeah that's in that's my opinion cool. so yeah. do you when you're like hunting is it like a whole day thing like you just go out for the day uh it depends so like the white tail will be a whole day yeah. thing because you never know when a buck will cruise and then by. you're just like sitting down like just yeah waiting? so white tail I'll change it up every now and then because I don't like to sit still for very long. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, sometimes I'll sit in a tree stand for like the morning or evening. And then during the day, I'll walk around. Um, black bear, you can kind of time them better. You can like pretty much figure out their, their patterns. So you can figure out, you know, most of the time they come in the, in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I just sit for, for the evening hunt. Yeah. They don't do a whole lot during the, during the day. Most of in the summertime, uh, spring, summertime, it's hot. So they just kind of lay low. Yeah. They don't move around. They're pretty... Yeah. Yeah, that, that's crazy. <laughs> Big animals, Damn, so man. yeah, it's very interesting. Like, yeah, I've never gotten into that side of the world. It's yeah, just like, it, it it's is. Yeah, cool. and my roommates when I was in the university, they they ch their opinions have changed from hunting because I would bring down, I bring down back straps of animals I've yeah. hunted and processed myself, and yeah. I've done it all. And it's like, yeah, I'm the only person that has handled this meat. And when you think about it like that, I mean, you're like, where you know you're going to the grocery store, you buy that package of steak, you're like. Where did this thing come from? Yeah, yeah. Where, what cow, what, whatever, where did this come from? And when you don't know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it it's kind of like off, but you're like, wait, hold on. Like, you're so disconnected yeah, from this the entire is, like, process. This is odd. And especially you eat this stuff, and you're like, I actually have no idea how this thing was died, like killed. You don't know anything. what they put in it either. Like, yeah, all the chemicals and steroids, whatever. Like, yeah. just all that sort of stuff. GMOs. Yeah. And like, this one, it's like, and you, you feel natural. better too. Like, when yeah. you eat this stuff, like, eat wild game feel better yeah it's that's like, very cool yeah. man that's sweet yeah. yeah i will have to try that out man yeah. i have to try that out like it just seems like a cool experience it is it is like, an experience i wish everyone could 
could experience it. I know not not everyone is built for killing an animal. Like yeah. it's it's uh it is powerful too. It's very and it's a it's a you have a lot of responsibility on your hand because you wound the animal. Yeah. There's a risk of it dying and slowly and like slowly, a miserable yeah. death. So you got to put your time into it. You got to put your effort into it all year sure round. Make sure it's like a clean. And make sure that's an ethical shot. Yeah. Like that bear, like I hit it right on the money. Yeah. Boom, he was down in seconds. Yeah. Like, you know, that that's the way you show. I mean, I, I'm not saying I've never wounded animals. I have. Um, and it sucks. Yeah. It eats you alive. I still think about it. There was a bear that I wounded and I, I clipped him on the shoulder blade and it just, it just popped out. So it didn't wow. do any damage. And it's just like, Fuck! Like I, I, I punched my tag. Yeah. I was like, for me, because you get a tag every year. I punched it, and I was like, I'm not taking another life out. That's yeah. not right. I couldn't find it. I tracked it for three days, Damn. and following little blood spots every now and then, and it's just like, either you're not, you're gonna not gonna find it, or yeah. you know, he's gonna survive. Most yeah. of the time, some of them will survive. They're yeah. pretty, like animals They're are tough. Beast, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that's just that's just part of it, and then yeah. that that just sits on you, and you're like what could I have done better? Yeah. You know? yeah. And, then you, and then you do. And then, that's crazy. Then man. Have, it's super yeah. like introspective, like reflecting and stuff. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Really it's, good. it's wild. It, it makes you think <laughs> of more than yourself really. Like you're just mm. like the entire process. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Shit. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's hop into sort of like the final segments and stuff. Like yeah, we always have good. the book of the week or the learning resource of the week. Yep. Um, we were talking about it earlier. Uh, anything from blogs to like just, books like people have recommended books people have recommended um, blogs podcasts websites yep. do you have anything like it can be anything like anything like liquor related distillery um, related hunting related yeah anything. yeah well most well since i'm mostly outdoors uh podcast knock on Ju john dudley he's a beauty he's an archery guru he does you know everything from like he posts youtube videos to so if you, ever want, if you just want to get into archery shooting yeah. the bow like that's therapeutic in itself um yeah, I've stuff. always wanted to try that. I've yeah, never done it's it before. like, and it's so people just think, oh, you shoot a boat. No, it is tough. And yeah. then you got, it's mental discipline. It's all, it's like running, running yeah. is a mental discipline. Same with hunting and all yeah. this other stuff. They all kind of go, you know, hand in hand with each other. So John Dudley, he's an awesome guy. Um, uh, Cameron Haynes has a podcast, but he doesn't really, uh, he hasn't posted a lot. Uh, Joe Rogan, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that guy because he's very versatile. And yeah. then um, the Meat Eater, Meat Eater podcast by Steve Ranella. He goes super into depth of just conservation, and he hunts all year round. I mean, he's uh, all he eats is wild game, and that's crazy. Yeah, how it really changed his life, and how the wildlife. You know, we need that stuff. Yeah. We need the wildlife around, and public lands is a big one down the states. And yeah. you know, keeping that into public land. like we like you and I like we own crown land here. It's yeah. called crown land. That's public land. We own that, and to not to like that go to the government and. That we, we don't get access to that yeah that or if it gets that, privatized and yeah you, like, yeah and sell like yeah. sectioned off it just sucks because like now the future generations have lost out on hunting privileges fishing camping yeah. hiking you know at, or social stuff you know anyone that walks in trails on public land yeah that's a big big deal yeah yeah, yeah. for sure so yeah those that probably awesome. those podcasts. So you like podcasts and stuff yeah right? I, I used to do this do a lot of podcasts um like those ones books I really read a lot of books. I should probably, yeah, should, if probably you, should. If you don't, then you it's know? all good. <laughs> I honestly, like, sometimes I just don't have time to, like, read every morning. So, like, I'll listen to audiobooks. Yeah, it's I like, like picture books. <laughs> yeah, dude, I am totally... <laughs> you know, look at stuff. Dude, oh, like, wow. I so. spy Where's Waldo. Yeah, Those were yeah. books back in the That's day. That's it. And you're just like, honest. oh, man. It's just so... I just look at that sick. stuff. I don't even need to read. Yeah. <laughs> What's this whole reading thing? Yeah. For real, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, um, that's cool. So, do you do uh, hiking and stuff too? Like, yeah, I hiking. hike. So, um, do you do any uh, cool my, stuff? Uh, yeah, my my girlfriend, uh, you know her, Bethany yeah, Korea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, we we go hiking. Uh, we went hiking to uh, oh man, Killarney. Uh, no, yeah, Killarney, and uh, we went to this big trail. That? It's called. So that's just north, north of uh, Perry Sound. Okay. So that's kind of west of where I live. Okay. And we went to a trail called the Crack, and it's like a pretty famous trail. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's like it's pretty rocky. It's nice. It's a six k there, or yeah, six k there and back. So three k there, three k back. Awesome. Yeah, it's nice. It's fun and wicked view, wicked yeah, view. So that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. We did a hike. We went up to Thunder Bay. I have a cabin up there. Okay. And cool. uh, yeah, we went on this hike. It was. Uh, the total time was like 22, 23 kilometers. Damn. It took all day. I was exhausted. That's a beast. I was exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you go up like 1,300 feet. Yeah. It's like you, you walk, you know, 7K, and then you just go, go yeah. straight up. And you're like. That's the thing with hiking, eh? Oh it's the God. elevation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a killer. There's always elevation. Yep. Yeah. Or else it's, or else it's not a hike, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
and it wrecks you after a while. It does. Oh my god, my legs were just. Yeah, I love hiking too. Like it's just, yeah. it's so nice to be out in nature. Like you get it exercise. Is, yeah. Yeah. Sort of like a low impact exercise. Too, yeah. Which is it's just nice. It's, you know, and you see th some things that you wouldn't see and experience some different stuff. Yeah. And, Even yeah. in Hamilton, we go a lot, mm. um, just like hiking. Like, obviously it's not far. Like yeah. some of the trails and stuff, like they have people on them, but like just to yeah. see waterfalls and stuff, it's like beautiful. Yeah, like yeah, there's she, some really nice places. Same with Bethany. She's shown me uh, tons of hikes in, uh, in Hamilton. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot. It's like, it's really cool. It's like, Stuff that you know, it's it's right there. The access is right and, there. It's and right if you backyard. weren't looking for it, you wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, I always just get blown away. Like when you finally go, you go on these hikes. If it's you know a meter long, however long these hikes are, you get wherever you get to where you want to go. Yeah. And you look at these spots, and you're like, man, this is awesome. Yeah, like, this yeah. Nature stuff. Like this is like this is cool. It's sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I love that. That's sweet. Um. Oh, I got a I got a question for you. This is actually from Sam. Okay. Obviously he's the chef. Yeah. She was asking if you forage anything, like if you like hunt, like I don't know if it's hunting, but she says foraging mushrooms and stuff. Mm. Like, do um, you do any of that stuff? I don't, but I really want to get into that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because um, she was wondering, because like I know, I know you're height hunting yep. and stuff. But yeah, like, I really want to get into that, like in mushrooms or you know those morels. Or yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I want to. Um, I I just pick like raspberries and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, off, yeah. Like the stuff bushes. you know for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, and safe. like so, I I I want to expand my knowledge on wildlife edibles. Mm -hmm. So like stuff you can take like um, a pine tree and you can make a tea with that or dandelion roots and you can make teas and. Really? herbal and organic yeah it's like very good for you like uh just and that's just then you're that's just there that's yeah, just yeah. natural um but yeah i want to get i want to get into that don't yet i want to because yeah. you can cook with that stuff and it's like it's fresh it's fresh it's free well, that's, <laughs> that's it like one day i really i want to be self-sufficient yeah, i want to be self-sufficient where all the stuff that i eat i consume is where I, i've done it i've grown it i've raised it like i, I have laying chickens right now so i got these little that's hands awesome, and they, they, they give me five eggs every Dude, single you're day you're super nature <laughs> yeah, eh? like yeah. it's sweet like yeah. that's awesome yep man. and then the end goal is to uh, you know prep up a garden this year to guess get a garden down for uh the next year and just start growing my own learning all that and that's a whole that's a lot of work but i don't care yeah, I, like, I, I would rather it's like hunting and fishing like it's a anyone that's a fisherman like it's a lot of work to get fish on that line a good yeah. size one that to it's keep true. and it's worth it and you, when you get that it's like the reward and satisfaction from it and then you get to eat it, it and yeah. enjoy it and it's like wow yeah. that like there's no better part from like starting with nothing you get something you can make something and then you get back something for like in return yeah. It's cool. Yeah, that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. That's sweet. So, like, you could live off the grid. Like, you, you have no problem. Yeah, I, 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 I would if I could. Yeah, that's awesome. The power thing is, uh, you know, yeah, every know. now and then I like to go on Instagram. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> so, know if I could do that. Yeah, I that, that would be could. tough. I would but, go crazy. But. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would try it. But if you ever need to, if there's a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> you're good, man. Like, that's what everyone <laughs> says. Like, I had uh, a bunch set, of buddies. Right. Up. Yeah, they like you know. They, I have a bunch of guns and everything. I'm a gun. I'm a gun owner. You know, whatever. Yeah. And it's like people are like, oh man, you got your set. If a zombie a zombie apocalypse happens, Dude. I'm coming up to your place. Yeah, and bro. It's like okay, well. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, bro. Like yeah. you're like indirectly a doomsday prepper right now. Yeah. You're set. Yeah, you're trying, set. yeah, yeah. Just not crazy. Well, you're not like a doomsday no. prepper, but you're just like yeah. you have the skills. I'm just trying survive. to um, keep things simple. That's simple, awesome. Simplify bro. my life. You know, which it's kind of is funny because. You know, it's a little more work, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I just find it's more satisfying. Life That's is more good, satisfying man. trying to do the stuff that I love it, bro. I, I yeah. love it, man. Yeah, I have a wood burning fireplace too in my house. That's so awesome. All you know, well, last last like year. That's how you heat of, it. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. So I would say about eighty percent of how I heat my house is wood wood burning fire. So I chop Very my cool. own wood, all that, all that stuff, and then I burn the wood. And um, cool. so I have some electric heat. Last year, so I moved into my house late October. Didn't mm -hmm. have a wood supply. House kind of just came up, and I just ended up buying it. But that's awesome, man! Um, Congrats. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And uh, so we, you know, we were stuck. Beth and I were stuck for like wood, so we just ran the electric heat. But it's super expensive. Yeah. So, but this year we have a wood for good sure. wood supply, and yeah, I have a yeah. I have a buddy that uh, his mom lives up north in the cottage, like three hours away, like towards Ottawa area. Yeah. Um, yep. but she's like off the grid. So like she has solar panels. Nice. She has like, you know, the well, yeah, yeah. all that sort of oh, stuff. That's yep. crazy. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. I mean, we don't have She lives in the water. middle of nowhere. It's yeah. crazy. It's, it's a different life and you're like, you can live out here. Yeah. It's like, I feel people are so comfortable. It's like just going to the grocery store, buying your stuff and it's nice convenience it's and wild, everything, yeah. but it's like, you can do it another you way. You could. Yeah. And it's a little bit, and to it's some not people, for everybody, it's but not like for everyone can. and it's rewarding for, yeah. you know, for the individuals that like that. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome, bro. Um, the last thing that we'll talk about is uh, 
the app of the day. Do you have any app recommendations? People always recommend um, cool stuff. Let me um, see. What, what was it? Yeah, like people in the past have recommended like, you know, I don't know, IT apps, uh, um, again, photography apps. Um, a lot of cool stuff. Well, I have a well, I've been using it. It's called Tiny Scanner. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like, just like scanning PDFs? Yeah, just, well, no, it just scans like you have a piece of paper and you just okay. scan it, email it from your phone. And just, oh, that's sweet. Yeah, just scan it, turns into a PDF and you can send it. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah, actually better than really... a, a taking a picture. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's, um, that's pretty cool. Um, moon phase, that. And I like the moon phase. So for me, for hunting or fishing, yeah. um, a lot of people, they go off the moon phases and the different moon phases, when it's a full moon, um, it'll actually change the interaction of animals. They'll make them, it'll change the activity of animals. Really? Yep. So a lot of people, they ba they base their hunts. Uh, I tried this year with uh, whitetail hunting um, with timing it with the moon phases. Okay. And that's apparently psychological with the deer, how they start to go into like the rut, which yeah. is like their breeding stages. And like, that's how they, people, some people say the moon phases help. Some people say no, right, to each its own. But I've tried it and it seems like the animal activity has kind of increased a bit. That's so crazy. any fishermen or something like that, check out moon phases, you know. So based on certain moons, there's going to be more animals. Yeah. Like, or yeah. types of animals. Does it um, just right? like the activity of them. They'll just become a little more active. Yeah, they'll start to like behave a little bit differently. Um, so like moon phases. So usually on a full moon, you have like the most activity. Um, depending on, you know, the, t the month and the temperatures and all that other stuff. But most of the time, yeah, you'll have a little bit more activity. Things will be a little more different. Um, yeah, because the moments. werewolves and stuff. Too, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> they start howling. And it's like, what, what the hell is that out there? That's crazy. I didn't even know that. Yeah. But, like, you could, obviously, that makes sense because animals are living things. And, like, yeah. they don't have watches. They don't have anything. So, no. obviously, the sun and the moon. Those are yeah, just make some act indicators for their time and stuff. Yeah, act a little differently. Yeah. Um, that's why I say, like, kids always get a little crazy on a full moon or something. Yeah, or at least yeah. when I was growing up, that's what I heard people say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that could be the same, same sort of thing. That's crazy, man. That's yeah. sweet. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Uh, is there anything that you want to talk about before we close this thing off? Um, like any stories you want to tell? Any? Well, not that I can think of. Any I rants mean, you want to go on? Any rants? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, there's tons of rants. I always forget that, that how much um, – I mean, it's stupid, but because I grew up here, right? Yeah. So I always, I always forget. Like, it's funny because uh, how much traffic there is here. Oh, dude, it sucks. <laughs> I always complain about it, and like I'm always just like the first one to just complain. And I, it's funny because it's like, well, I used to live here, so I should know about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But when you come from a town of a thousand people, when you come down every now and then, it's like, oh man, it's like I actually get like headaches. Yeah. But I don't know. It's a totally different vibe, man. It is. It like, is. You hear that from like people that live up north or people that like are from like the Caribbean and stuff. Yeah. Because like my dad's from Trinidad. So oh yeah, like, yeah. You know, we have a lot of family there, and like, you know, it's a totally different vibe. People are just chill, mellow. We'll yeah, do it yeah, do whatever. Yeah, but like in GTA, everybody's rushing, rushing, go, rushing. Go, 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 just like, nonstop. And that, but nuts. that's why cities are cities, and they're they're outputting right. They got like all the business. So how's the vibe in like the small town? Is it like more relaxed? Like people yeah, like, I think people are a little more relaxed, and that's why I f I feel why Copperhead it's easy but it's not easy to be successful yeah. because everyone you know like you're if you're willing to work hard and to sacrifice you can make a name for yourself in a small town yeah but yeah it, it's it's nice it's uh it's wicked because you know i, I know pretty much every, not everybody but i know the majority of all the uh, businesses around and like mm -hmm. talking to everybody you you know talk to the the other owners and you get to like you know even when cashing out groceries you just see the same cashiers it's just nice and like hey how, how you doing and that's awesome instead yeah. of just being like a cashier hey i'm just here for my job hey thanks uh, next yeah you yeah. just don't know them it's just different it's I an mean, actual community yeah i mean it takes a lot longer to go to places because like i'm always bumping into people like, oh hey how you doing oh hey yeah, how yeah. you doing oh what's up how's it going on and you know and then like, you end up spending like two hours at the home hardware and you're like oh shit i was supposed to just come get a yeah, dish yeah. soap or something <laughs> which makes sense though but like that's yeah. that's the small community. yeah i i like it that's it's awesome. awesome um they've been so helpful for us with everything um so i i don't i love sunridge it's uh fantastic so. that's very cool man i love it yeah um is there a question that you want like every week we usually do a question so ask a question for the audience like hmm. that they can think about ponder when they're hunting or stuck in traffic <laughs> <laughs> um a question could be anything like people have asked like uh hmm. uh I had one of my cousins on actually, like he's a power lifter yeah, and I saw he recently that. got yeah. injured. So like the question that he asked was, why did you get injured? Like, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe my question is why, why do like you as a, as a person, why do you do what you do every day? Okay. Just, I, I maybe that's kind of weird, but why do you do it? 
Like yeah. I do it. I do the stuff I do every day because I obviously I love it and it's like something that I'm passionate about. Uh, you know, like I'm just kind of curious of why people do what they do. Yeah, you know, a lot of people like our age and stuff. It's hard to find jobs and everything, so they sure. they're they're going different routes. But why are you doing that route? Yeah, to yeah. me, I always find that curious. I'm just yeah. like, why why do you why are you doing that? Yeah, you know? and a lot That's, of people chase money too, mm -hmm. which is not the right thing to do. And it seems that like. You know, I, I don't chase money at all. I yeah. do stuff because I enjoy it. Yeah, me too. Because, you know, I'll help you grow. And you seem like the same type of yep. person that's been doing that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And like, like you don't that's hunt kinda, for money. Like you no, no. Yeah, I do it because I, mean? I, yeah, yeah, so I love it. It's pa I'm passionate. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, because awesome. I find if people don't have an answer to that, then it's like, to me, it's like, well, why are you doing it? Yeah. You know, do something because you, you have a reason to do it. It's just like, oh, I'm just doing it. I don't know, because I got nothing else to do. Or I'm just for doing sure. this. It's like. Maybe that should change. Yeah, and then maybe yeah. you can. Then maybe once you start changing that, and maybe you can, your life will start changing. I don't know. For sure. Yeah. Awesome, man. I don't know. Sweet. Was, <laughs> All right, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, what's your social media? And uh, uh, it's so my social media is just Dan Fershat. Yep. Simple. Uh, F E R C H A T. Um, my last my last name. Yep. Um, you can follow Copperhead Distillery too. On uh, Instagram. Yeah. Twitter. Instagram. Uh, uh, no, we don't do Twitter. Just Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we have a website, copperhead-distillery.com. Cool. You can buy all of our products. You can buy them all online. Ship it right to your door. So, oh, really? From yep. the website? Yep. Awesome, and so bro. when you spend 150 bucks or more, free shipping. Yeah. Otherwise, it's 25 flat rate. Boom, Perfect. right to your door. Get booze. and Awesome, bro. Yeah. And then you guys are in LCBOs as well across yep. Ontario. Yep. A few of them. Nice. Yeah, if you ever want to try one of our products, our LCBO products, uh, you can always just ask the LCBO to in-store transfer. Uh, if not, Perfect. just... Direct, buy it directly from us. Awesome, bro. Yeah. Sweet, man. Yeah. Let's wrap this thing up. All right. It's well, been thank, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again for having me on. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. We'll get you to come thank back you. on after our hunting trip. We'll All right. Go, we'll go hunting. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go hunting. You know, <laughs> slay a big animal and yeah. uh, cook it up over fire. Oh, and, yeah. You know, we can <laughs> yeah. do a podcast out there awesome, or something. Awesome, bro. Yeah. That'd be sweet, bro. <laughs> Sounds All right. Good. Thanks again for having, coming on, bro. Yeah. No problem. It's been a thank lot you. of fun. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace out. Canadian.